their belief in originality, quality, and innovation earned them 71 Emmys over three years. They built their own fire that is catching everywhere with a base of over 195 million paid subscribers worldwide. This is the story of Netflix. Hey everyone and welcome to Booked, where we inspire others with inspiring stories. In today's video, we are going to go over the success story of Netflix and talk about its founders, Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph. So make sure to watch this video till the end because we are going to share with you the books that the founders read along his amazing journey. Books that changed their lives and that may change yours. But before getting to the middle of today's video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. There are two ways to enjoy a day off or the remainder of a workday. You either wind down through relaxing activities, which puts you in the slim minority, or you kill time with your favorite shows. And that's where the rest of us, also known as the majority, lie. Speaking of shows, television does not offer much convenience. With the commercials raging every five minutes and the cable becoming increasingly costly, television is defeating its original purpose of entertainment. Not only that, circumstances come in the way or you may not be able to get your hands on your favorite international program on your national channels. Not a very nice experience. The emergence of Netflix, however, made the possibility of a memorable experience a complete reality. It's become that hard for people to prefer any other activity besides sitting for their daily Netflix and chill session, which nobody could ever decide how long it should last. How did it get there? Let's find out how the founders did it. Who were the founders before their ways crossed? The founders, Mark Randolph and Reed Hastings, come from different interesting backgrounds before meeting. Mark Randolph was born in Chappaqua, New York, and has some interesting paternal ties. One of his great grand uncles was none other than Sigmund Freud, while his great uncle was Edward Bernays, the father of propaganda and public relations. His father was a nuclear engineer who turned to financial advising, while his mom managed her own firm of real estate. Although Randolph graduated from college with a degree in geology, his first job at the Cherry Lane Music Company was what piqued his interest in marketing. He was put in charge of mail and order, which is where he experimented with techniques of selling sheet music to clients and explored the realm of software and computer science. To his fascination, he worked on it to see if he could take advantage of its potential for marketing. As a result, Randolph learned how to monitor customers' purchase activity, and he dabbled in the area of mail delivery and set his own theories about speed delivery and its relation with customer retainability. Each of these experiences would later prove to be of use to Randolph. After working for eight years at Borland on marketing strategies development, Randolph left to work in a number of small startups across Silicon Valley before settling on one of the nine founders of Integrity QA. On the other hand, there's Reed Hastings, who was born in Boston to a health, education, and welfare department attorney, and a mother who raised him and his siblings to hate the high society she comes from. He studied in Buckingham Brown and Nichols School in Massachusetts, and even had to spend his gap year knocking on doors to personally sell vacuum cleaners to people. After graduating college with a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics, he joined the Marine Corps, only to carry on later with a Peace Corps in Africa, where he taught mathematics in a village high school. According to Hastings, his time in Peace Corps in Africa and the inconveniences he faced there are what he owes his spirit of challenge and leadership in the entrepreneurship world to. As he got his master's degree in computer science from Stanford University, Hastings landed his first job at Adaptive Technology and developed a software debugging tool. At this stage, he learned from the CEO, Audrey McLean, that it was better to work on one quality product than two that lacked. As he left Adaptive Technology, Reed Hastings founded Pure Software and faced some challenges being the head as the company grew, and later on went through two mergers that included the acquisition of Integrity QA. As a result, Mark Randolph was appointed vice president. Since the processing of merging took a long time, both Randolph and Hastings commuted together to the workplace and spent their time on the highway trying to think of the next groundbreaker and to avoid the awkward transitional period as they start their new business after departure. 
the highway idea was born. The year is 1997. Randolph is coming up with ideas, and Hastings is backing him up on the money side. DVDs are the new big thing. Randolph wanted to follow after Amazon's model of e-commerce. The thought of mailing a DVD occurred to them, and they wondered if it were possible at all, but they couldn't get one, and so tried mailing a CD with a greeting card stuck on it, and it worked just fine. The destination of delivery was Reed's house. That was their aha moment. Now they can mail these things, so there's no limit what they can put in them, but the two gravitated towards movies. They thought of various names for their business, now showing Take One, Netflix, and finally Mark settled on Netflix. Initial investors besides Reed Hastings included Mark's mother and Steve Kahn from Integrity QA. While Reed Hastings resumed his studies at Stanford University Graduate School, Mark Randolph assumed the position of chief executive and took on designing and developing the user interface. He made sure it provided the best possible experience by constantly improving it and always being on the lookout for what's better to include. The result was an online catalog of movies that doubled as a platform for the company's market research for future enhancements. This enabled him to see which additions worked and which didn't. In 1999, Netflix's successful and effective business model emerged. Subscription-based, no due dates, no late fees, unlimited content access, and a queue that mails DVDs in a requested order. The company even upgraded its system of delivery, where it mails you your next DVD as soon as you mail back your previous one. Netflix was working with a little over 900 movie titles, and as a small growing company, it faced a problem of having a small DVD inventory. To solve that, it connected its interface with Cinematch, an engine which fed on user data and based on that, it recommended shows that were in stock and lessened the pressure on what shows that were set for new releases. Although it might feel like the founders had it easy and that there were no problems, it is reported that by the year 2000, Netflix hit a new low and was at a loss. Reed offered to sell it to Blockbuster Video for $50 million but they laughed at the idea and rejected it. The dawn of success. When the company successfully pulled through and went through its first IPO, Mark decided his job of closely monitoring the startup stage was done and Netflix was doing great. So he parted ways with the company. Though it sounds like he left too early before great things happened, Mark says he has no regrets. And he takes great pleasure working as an entrepreneurship and leadership mentor, a speaker, and an entrepreneur for High Point University. His net worth is currently estimated at $100 million. Carrying on with Netflix, Reed explored new areas and reached new heights through launching the streaming platform in 2007. By 2011, it was available in Canada, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Netflix then successfully released its first originals, among which was Orange is the New Black and House of Cards. As 2017 rolled over, Netflix not only went worldwide, but also hit its milestone of 100 million subscribers. Reed Hastings brought Netflix to be worth over 230 billion, which is around 770 times more than it was in 2002. In 2018 only, the earnings amounted to 16.1 billion. What's worth noting is that the company spent around 12 billion on original content in the same year, and as it is still growing, it is still spending more on originality. Subsequently, Netflix's number of original works recently outnumbered works acquired from elsewhere. This helped the company immensely in dominating the US views, and so it occupies a massive 70% of them. Want another reason behind the success? It's the company's policy with its employees. It's a matter of fact that employees are the skeleton of any company, and they're an important factor that decides whether it gets stronger or deteriorates further. Netflix CEO is well known for his innovative ways, mainly that of the no rule rule and the principle of responsible freedom, in which employees were left to manage their time freely but responsibly rather than taking days off or even sick leaves. This contributed to the growth of Netflix. Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph's picks. Our corner for book recommendations this time features an array of rich material for budding entrepreneurs. If anything, these titles are so reputable that Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph make part of a long list of figures who share admiration for what they offer. 
Principles, Life and Work by Ray Dalio. This is a book from someone who reached the tip of his own mountain. The book goes about the necessity of failure, the beauty of success, and the importance of coming with your own principles. It also talks about the process of creating thoughts and challenges readers to practice radical truth and radical transparency. Powerful, Building a Culture of Freedom and Responsibility by Patty McCord. McCord is credited for the unique creative culture at Netflix, and her book is listed by the Washington Post as one of the 11 books for leadership, team recruiting, and motivation par excellence. Tools and Weapons, The Promise and the Peril of the Digital Age by Brad Smith and Carol Ann Brown. Instantly, a New York Times bestseller from Microsoft President, a necessary guide on how to find the balance between real and digital life as the digital one seems to take over. That will never work. The Birth of Netflix and the Amazing Life of an Idea by Mark Randolph. From the Netflix co-founder Mark Randolph himself, this book needs no more to be said. It documents the life of Netflix from an idea to large-scale company in details and offers valuable entrepreneurship gems for those in need. No Rules Rules, Netflix and the Culture of Reinvention by Reed Hastings and Aaron Meyer. If you ever wanted to delve deep into the bottom of Netflix psyche, then the No Rules Rules book has to be on your reading list since it goes through the different success and failure stories of Hastings himself. This book is every entrepreneur's haven of wisdom, where it showcases the philosophy behind the entertainment giant. The story of Mark Randolph and Reed Hastings may not be your typical motivational one with the exceptionally difficult childhood or unforgiving circumstances, but it is definitely one of dedication and hard work. Home sometimes is wherever you find it comfortable, whether it be your comfy sofa, your pet, your smart TV with your favorite show on, or all of the above, and Netflix has made it all possible thanks to the passion of two men who were never afraid of experimenting and implementing creativity and innovation in their work. The story of Netflix is packed full of lessons for anyone to learn, and it's undoubtedly been a pleasure for us to feature here on Booked. <laughs>